everyone, welcome to Patchwork Plus. Paula Caldwell here with Ruler of the Month Club, Club Six. And today we're gonna to talk about um, the builder template. And um, as we started Ruler Club Six, you might remember that if you um, attended all six ses sessions, excuse me, then you got a free ruler uh, as a bonus and then a pattern to go with it. So there was either a sampler, and these are 12 inch blocks, or um, this sampler, which is shaped like houses with a six inch pieced block inside of each house block of 12 inches. So the options were there for you to choose. So um, today we're gonna look at Builder. Uh, if you did not, um, or if you were not able to be with us for all six classes, that's okay. It is still available and you can purchase it for $19.95 here at Patchwork Plus. So no problem there. And if you attended all six, then it, it will be yours uh, as a freebie. So the builder template uh, has a unique shape. Um, so he is both curvy and straight. So on this side, we have uh, stacks, if you will, that we're gonna go in and out of. And then on this side, you have a nice curve that you can do scallops, um, circles even, um, make fish. We'll show you how to make fish. Um, so a lot you can do there. Um, I think Handy Quilter in their, one of their sessions with Builder showed using this as a fill uh, throughout the, the quilted, the, the pieced area, if you will. So we'll look at that and, and the idea that they use, and that certainly would be something you could consider as you think about uh, quilting your quilt. For the roof, they use the rounded edge to create um, like shingles, if you will, uh, on, on each roof. So again, very doable, and we can stitch that out. On the back of your pattern, you can see this idea of stacking up bricks or stones. Um, then following along one edge, you can come back and do some free motion. Um, and we'll talk about you know, different ways of doing that, one at a time or coming back and, and doing all the flowers at one time. This is our good old friend, Egg and Dart. And then this is um, a shadowed or echoed scallop, which you can see some of the same ideas here on my sketch pad. So this one is just moving the template a quarter of an inch to get that little bit of an echo. And then it meets here in the center. But if you wanted it, you could move it a little bit more. So this is moving it so that the midline hits those points and then it closes that and creates a nice little cone or diamond diamond shape there. Okay, so this is your clamshell. But if you were to reverse it, you can see that it would look like a roof, you know, the shingles on a roof, which is what they used. Here's your egg and dart. So first you're traveling this way, and then you're gonna turn the ruler and come back the other way. And I'm using, um, let's see, something dark. You can see the first registration line, okay, will line up with the bottom of my first arc. And then that will give me the next egg and dark coming this way, All right? So this happened because I made a mistake. Um, sometimes that's fun and sometimes not so much, but this time it was kind of fun. So I made my scallops going that way or my arcs and I meant to turn it one direction, but I didn't, I turned it a different direction. And what happened was I got this shape, let me take that away which you could make it more narrow or further apart. It, at first it was like rit rack. And then the more I looked at it, I thought it could be a caterpillar. Put a little head up here. Um, you could make it fatter or, or more skinny. So just another idea. So that happened because I put that first registration line on my point and went back the other direction. And then this is just kind of um, a swag, if you will, a small swag. And this time I had the very tip right on the end of 
the top of each arc. So just some fun things to do. And of course, cathedral windows, we all like that. Um, so you start, I'm doing it upside down, but I'm gonna do it for you on the camera. So I've got that first registration line. Let's say that's my, if this were a border, I always mark my midline. So that would be my midline. And I come across this way. And then I'm going to turn it. And this time I'm gonna line up the top of the arc uh, in the middle of the midpoint of the first arc. And again, my registration line is gonna match up there and then come this way. And that will actually give you another design, which is quite nice that you could use in a small or narrow border. But if you wanted to complete it, then you would turn your template this way and complete your circle and then turn it this way. And again, line up here with your midline and then come back and it creates a nice little cathedral window. It's oftentimes, I don't know about you, but sometimes it's hard to find narrow uh, designs for those narrow spaces. So the egg and dart and the cathedral windows here, or even just um, half of an orange peel, um, gives a nice small um, fill for some of those narrow sashings or, or those little narrow places that we find in our quilts. So let's go to the machine and stitch some of these out and have some fun. Okay, so as you can see, you're gonna travel in and out of these, um, these inserts. The trick is when you get to the top, um, you might find it easier to go on top and at some times we're gonna flip it and this time we'd be traveling along the bottom. The idea is you've got to come out far enough that you're gonna clear this with your foot. So you've gotta keep traveling up before you travel over. And then you're gonna eyeball it so that you can move back in. So it really does take some practice and you're gonna see, I'm not joking, and you're gonna see that I need more practice. So I found it easier to, to keep the line on the bottom, but we're gonna start with it on the top. And I'll show you first what happens if you just follow around, you're gonna get a rounded corner. And that might work for whatever it is you're working on. Let's say maybe you're working on stones. Or... So if you follow this, I don't know if you can see that or not, it's gonna round that, that edge. So if you want this stacked look of stones or bricks, then the trick is you've got to travel. And I have to come up with a little mantra, if you will. So I'm going to go up, up, over, down. Up, up, over, down. Up, up, over, and down. Up, over, down. So now you get that, that squared off point, if that's what you want. Then if you wanted to stack them, I'm gonna come to the midline here, stop, and then I would put this, and I've got my machine too far ahead of me here. So this time around, instead of lining it up here, um, yep, yeah, I'm gonna put that there. Okay, and then I'm gonna come back. Up, over, and down. Up, over, and down. Up, over, and down. So that's how you would stack them and just keep moving 
up that way. But it does take some practice. Um, and I, I would be less than honest if I didn't say that, or I found it did. It, it's just um, to clear that foot, uh, once you come up, you've got to clear enough space, a quarter of an inch. Um, once you have that first one in place, then it becomes your guide. But, um, you know, kind of talking your way through it is a good way to do it. Okay, so let's move on over this way. Another idea is instead of building out, you can face them inward. So this time what I'd like um, is the line that's going out to go in between these two. So let me get back here. So now what I'm going to do is line up. So this time around, actually I need to turn my ruler this way. And I'm going to put this first registration line at the end of this point. And then I'm going to come up and go over and in, down, over, in. Right, stop and adjust my hand. Down, over, down, over, in. That gives you a posing. And you could push those a little closer if you wanted to. Um, I think uh, Christine Whitney, the handy quilter educator that demoed this ruler, she mentioned that she uses this design on triangles like a carrot. I haven't tried that yet, but it certainly caught my attention because I remember her mm -hmm. saying that. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you can um, play with that a little bit and see what you can come up with. Another idea that was on your idea sheet was to, to make little flowers. Okay, so there are a couple of ways to think about doing that and everybody's gonna have their own preference, which makes the world goes round. So, I'm going to put this here. So I'm going to travel here and my lines are going to be going up and these are going to be the stems to those little flowers that they that they show. So I'm going to go down, over, and up. Down, over, and up. Reminds me of an electric party gun. Okay, we'll do this last one. Now, one option would be you stitch one, you take the ruler away, make the flower, put your ruler back. And that seemed arduous to me. So what I decided was I did all of my stems and then you can come back and do your fill, which I gotta get my speed up a little bit. And come back down and I would use my straight edge, which I don't have with me today. I'm going to sneak over here by eye and backtrack and then come up and do my next flower. Okay. And if you're really on a good day, you can just keep moving over and then come up.
So yeah, play with that. Again, another idea for those small spaces that sometimes, sometimes we stand and look at the big spaces not knowing, but sometimes it's those little spaces that can really kind of throw us for a loop. Okay, let's use the curvy side a little bit. And everybody's a little different again, how, what, what they find to be um, the best way. I'm in cruise and I'm, I'm like 175 to 200, I think. It's really about how smooth and consistent you can be. But that seems to work best for me. Okay, so now let's think about if we were doing, um, let's do um, egg and dart. So I'm gonna come back this way and I've got this registration line on my mark. And I always have to think about this because I get it wrong and I need to come up. There it is. Points are missing up from there. I did better on, on the domestic uh, when doing that one. So that one I would wanna keep trying until I got that more smooth. Um, if you wanted to build your clamshells, and as a reminder, I do have my ruler base on and the shore foot on again for safety as well as for accuracy. Okay, so I'm gonna go straight up. So now when you start coming back, your registration line hits the top of that arc and the top of this arc is gonna be the most outside element, if that makes sense. too hard on the ruler which is why I got that bump. It's really easy to do and the machine doesn't like it when you do that. And it's going to win every time. Okay. And then if you want to keep, keep adding to that then again the same thing. So again I'm lining up this registration line. This is happening because I have my hand here, which is a habit of mine. And if you have a long arm, I don't know if you've noticed that or not, but when you have it here and you're putting pressure on it, it doesn't like to move in that one particular area. And um, I forget that until it happens, and then I have to, to stop and um, take it out. So just a reminder to, if you have your hand here, just kind of be aware of where it is um, when, you're, when you're stitching out. Um, one more that we can do is uh, a favorite of everybody's is the cathedral window. So around and around. And yes, I really do talk to myself at home like this, around and around, because my mind wanders off. And then before I know it, you know, it's like, wow, how did that happen? And it reminds me to, to hug, because I want these to meet. So I need this registration line up here. There it is. It's 
so tiny, you know, I'm not used to that. So you could stop at that if you wanted to, if you wanted to complete the circle. Just do that with freehand. Then what you're gonna do is come back and make your circle. So again, that first registration line is now on the bottom. I'm going to kind of, if you will, mirror image. It's already there. So if that's what we're going to get, but to get that, I've got to move down to leave myself a quarter inch there. So I'm lining up that registration line. Okay, here we go. There it is. really pretty. I mean, it's so, it's traditional, but we never tire of looking at it, do we? It's just such a pleasant design. Um, it's a really, really nice. Okay, so a lot of things to do with this. We're, we're kind of used to those round edges, but again, uh, take some practice to get used to hugging those lines as you move across. Um, I would be curious to see how you find using these square corners or these, these corners rather than round it off um, to see what your experience is. Um, I'm sure I could learn something from you as well. So enjoy the builder. Use it. Um, you can use it again, as we said, for fill work, um, for making um, roofs, the shingles, cathedrals, uh, clamshells, dart and egg, and then impromptu flowers. So have fun with it. And yeah, we'll see you next time. Take care, be safe, and maybe soon we'll all be together again. Bye now.